Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talk with the Titans, live from London, UK, all the way to the US of A and worldwide. I'm your host, Callum L, and this is Talk with the Titans. Tonight's show, we've got the uh, Titan Garfield in the building from Team Osiris, uh, PCU King, Team Osiris on the horizon. Peace, brother. How are you doing, brother? I think I'm going to have to restart that again. Um, so let me do that again. Let me restart that again. If everybody's actually tuning in right now, and I'm about to restart that, uh, please hit the share button. Let everybody know that we've got uh, Team Osiris here with us. We've got Amon Ra squad with us. And I'm pretty sure we've got the Dagger squad here with us as well. So I'm just going to quickly restart that. And let's go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talk with the Titans live from London, UK, all the way to the US of A and worldwide. I'm your host, Callum L, and this is Talk with the Titans. Tonight's show, we've got the Titan himself, Garfield from Team Osiris, Team Osiris on the horizon. Stand up. What are you saying, God? Peace. Peace and blessings, Black Power. Brother Kalam, got my brother Ank in the building, Team Osiris, Chris, Melvin. Now, what's going on, family? Got a dagger squad here. Got true story and Allen in the building. All right. right. So, yeah, just want to remind everybody to keep their mics uh, muted. Uh, we're about to go in. I know you want to talk on various things. I know you're going to give us a sneak preview into your presentation. Um, I know you're going to be talking about, um, you know, Zion Lex. We just had him on uh, quite just recently on the last show. So if you haven't actually checked out the last show, which was literally just uh, 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, please check out the last show and then come back and watch this show as well. Um, you know, there's been there's been numerous um, interactions going on. Uh, you know, you dropped a video on Sarnet TV quite recently. I see my brother Zion Lex did a rebuttal video to certain aspects of it. The video. So what the most... Um, critical points I would actually like for you to address straight away, straight off the bat, is the issue to do with um, Taharqa. Because um, I believe there was some type of inconsistency uh, presented by Zion Lex and others about your dating with uh, Taharqa and I believe the King Nebuchadnezzar? Um, no, with, actually with Sanarchib. Sanarchib is an Assyrian king and there was an issue with Taharqa was like the guy who helped them out and, um, you know, it, it's in one part, it's in Chronicles, but not in Kings, so, or vice versa. But um, that's pretty much what they issue is. They're trying to say Taharqa. It's not issue if he's contemporary. But that's the, they're trying to be slick. Brother was trying to be slick a while ago. It's not an issue. So when you say somebody's contemporary, that means if I rule for 50 years between 1970 and, nine, and 20, 2020, and you born 2019, we are contemporaries. But we're not contemporary in the fact that you had a fight with another country and I helped you out. So you, I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't play a role. So that's what the issue is. Taharka did not play a role when Sinarchib and Hezekiah had that back and forth. So that's what the issue is. Not only with um, the Bible believers, also with the people from you know from the from the conscious community, because usually that's that's one of the people that we mention whenever we trying to say, yo, we helped y'all out. Y'all, 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 we ain't no enemies of y'all, you know what I'm saying? So we always talk about Taharqa because we talk about the Magi, we talk about the, how the Nubian pharaohs, how they rule in the 25th dynasty, you know what I'm saying? His his uncle Shabaka and his other uncle Shabitku were the ones who actually dealt with Sanarchim at that time period. So, you know, so that's basically what went on. But as far as the um the presentation on Sarnetta, that 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 a lot of people complain about that. But I mean, if you if you, if is either you go submit to 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 what you use as scholarship, because if you use references outside your community, you can't complain when you are using it for your own benefit. But when somebody else uses it, oh, you're using a white man's method, and you using his method anyway. You know, because we gotta face the fact, folks. 99.9% .9 of the people digging out there is not us. We have Anthony Browder, and we have a few people out there, but that's it. Who do we have? We don't have nobody. Go ahead, Kanal. My brother, you've got your, um, you know, it looks as though you're about to share something with us. I see that your screen is on uh, share mode. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So After, I like to show people the, the, the evidence so that they could see for themselves, so they can't say, where are your sources? That's their biggest argument. Where are your sources? Well, 
I'm going I'm going I'm going to show you basically what the sources are. You know, it's up to you to 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 go back and research yourself. But I'm going to show a few little things um, from the Livius website. I'm going to show um, um, the dynasty, the 25th dynasty. I'm going to show who they are and the time periods that they have um, dated for them. And let's go through it. That's basically it. It's not going to be long. Probably 15 minutes top. I'm going to just run through it real quickly. I'm not even going to open the Bible, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not even going to open the Bible. I'm just going to use common sense, and then we're going to deal with it properly. All right. Before you do that, real quickly... Because um, I would love for as, as many people as possible to view this. Um, I know we just came off a show with the brother Zion Lex. Now we've got brother Garfield here with us right now. We're doing two shows in one night. Damn. And, you know, let's, let, me know, let me know even go there. So if possible, please um, hit the share button. Hit the share button down below and uh, get as many people in to actually listen to this information. This is going to be very, very thought-provoking information that my brother Garfield is about to drop. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's nobody in the conscious community at present dropping this information on the 25th dynasty, on uh, you know uh, the Pharaoh to Harker, uh, the General to Harker, you know, and marrying it in with the biblical or uh, Hebrew Hebrewism or Hebrew texts, and whether and to, whether the two actually line up or not. So this is going to be real powerful. So please hit the share button and let everybody know that my brother Garfield is live and direct with us right now. Brother Garfield, back over to you. Yes, sir. So basically, let me start off by saying that there are some chronological difficulties. This is from the Jewish Encyclopedia, by the way. It's an article on Hezekiah, and it talks about the chronology of Hezekiah's time presents some difficulties. The years of his reign has been variously given as 726 to 696, 724 to 696, 728 to 697. So these are the scholars, by the way. Kola is a pretty famous scholar from back in the days. And then you have the modern critics, Wellhausen, Kampas, and Meyer, who dated from 714 to 689. All right. The issue now is what did who was Hezekiah beefing with when they had the invasion? Because if you guys read the prisms of Sennacherib, he basically talks about taking away 200,000 people from out of Judah. Now, I'm not saying that number is correct. And if he's exaggerating to try to seem like some top dog king, that's on him. But that's what the record says. All right? Now, the issue here now is that 2 Kings 18 and 10 says, um, assigns the fall of Samaria to the sixth year of Hezekiah. This would make 728 B.C. the year of his ascension. And by the way, I'm saying 728 because I'm actually accepting the standard chronology for that time period. I don't think there's anything wrong with the Egyptian chrono chronology between um, Shabako and, 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 um, and, and um, Taharka. I don't think there's any errors for us to even address between those three kings. Because those are the three kings on the Egypt side that we're talking about. While on the Assyrian side, we're talking about Sennacherib and um, Esharhadan and I think uh, Ashurnapal. Maybe, no, I think Ashurnapal, maybe, yeah. All right. So three kings on one side, three kings on the other, and we're talking about Hezekiah, and we're talking about Manasseh. All right? So we're talking about eight different kings in three different cultures. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we have two dates that the scholars are going with. They're going with either 728 B.C. that he became king, or 714 B.C., all right? Now, Tahar Taharka was born around 708 B.C., all right? Let me just switch to the 25th dynasty right here and just scroll down. As you see, Livius.org is the site that I'm using. This is a website if you're doing researching on ancient documents. It's one of the best websites to use. If you look to the right, it says on this page, you see Pi, the King Pi. They have Shabako, Shabitko, and Taharko. Now, Taharka, Shabako, and Shabitko are actual brothers, okay? So you have Pi, who is the last king before them. Then Pi reigned from 716 B.C. all the way to around 701 B.C. So he died during the time period of Sennacherib, right? His brother, Shabitko, was the general, and the, 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 the fight that they had with Assyria, I think, was around 703 B.C., and that was because they were defending um, I think Tyre and Sidon was paying tribute to Cush, the Cushite kings, who is Shabitko and Shabako. Now, after them, Taharka takes over at 690. Now, the issue with the time period now 
is that um, Hezekiah ruled during the time Taharqa was king, but the issue with Assyria was with um, while these guys were king. So it's not that the Bible made an error, it's just that the, 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 the most popular king in the 25th dynasty was Taharqa. All right, because he had some battles with, um, with um, what do you call it, with the Assyrians, and he actually defeated them a couple of times. All right, so let's look at, I'm going to look at this real quickly, and this is going to pretty much tell everybody what's going on. This is Taharqa. Of course, these are the names that he has on the record that he's known on, on actual physical record. All right, this website is from euler.slu.edu. It's an educational website, and I want you guys, if you want to use the source, you can go ahead and use it. It doesn't matter. I could put it in a side chat for you guys. All right, but um, Taharqa ruled from 690 to 664 BC. Some people have 688, you know, not too far off. All right. Now, Taharqa ruled for 26 years, right? So during the 26 years, he had some battles with the Assyrians. Now, the first battle that he had was at 677 BC. And let me correct something that I said earlier. I'm sorry. It wasn't Sidon and, and Tyre. That um, the, his uncles had bad, was um, paying tribute to. Um, it was Etar Eterkel and Ekron, E K R O N and Eterkel. Those little cities, vassal cities, were paying money to the Kushite pharaohs of Egypt, Shabako and Shabitku. All right, just I just have to correct myself. All right, now Taharka, right? If you look at this. You have the Kushite kings also receive much attention, res respecting the importance of Ptah despite the Kushite's devotion to Ammon. Taharqa also warred with the Assyrians in Sidon around 677 BC. Sidon was paying tribute to the Kushite king, who was Taharqa, who was king over Egypt and Ethiopia at the same time. All right? So at 677 was the first time he had a battle with the Assyrians. Now, the battle that Hezekiah had with the Assyrians was at 701 BC. So we know Taharqa was not around at that time period because he would have been seven years old, six or seven years old at the time. So he wasn't the general because Shabitko, his uncle, was the general and Shabaka was the king. All right? So that we are clear on this. Okay. Why is Taharqa so popular? Look at this. He had a war with the, um, the Assyrians in Sidon around 677 BC, which caused Esardan's campaigns against Lower Egypt in the following years. So he beat them up 677 BC. They come back in 674 BC, angered King Esarhaddon, who is the son of Senarchib, right? Who had beef with Hezekiah. The son now is beefing with Taharqa, who is the nephew of the kings that they were battling with. So now he's angry over the Egyptian interference with his vassal states in Palestine and attacked Egypt. Taharqa swiftly rebuked their advance and caused the invaders to retreat. So that's twice now he beat them in three years. He beat up the Assyrians. But another three years later, in 671 BC, the Assyrians try again and succeed. The delta subsequently falls into Assyrian possession while Taharqa escapes to Thebes. The Assyrians take Memphis capture the royal queen and the crown prince and establish native puppet chieftains and their representatives in all key positions. In Sais, a certain prince, Miko, swears allegiance to the Assyrians and his son is sent to Assyria for political training. A lot of people don't understand this. Miko I and Miko II were basically vassal kings for the Assyrians. This is why Miko II was... Um, was 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 fighting with Assyria to get back Babylon against Nebuchadnezzar when he was a general. That's when that's when Egypt got beat up at at um, Karshemish. But it really wasn't Egypt; it was the Assyrians. But Egypt was just helping them, so they didn't really beat Egypt up. They beat up the Assyrians. All right. And a side note for those who love Josephus: Josephus mentions Nico was king when Abraham, who who is the patriarch. Was um, it's actually in the um, what do you call it? The side notes are the um, the the additional stuff that Joseph was wrote with his writings. All right, I'll give you guys a, a specific place later on. All right, now Nico now 
swears allegiance to Assyrians and they sent his son who is Samaticus the first I think all right so we're gonna to get to him in a second but Nico swears allegiance to the Assyrians as soon as the Assyrians leave the country to their Egyptian vessels Taharka drives his forces north again and regains full control of Egypt in 669 Taharka would have restored his rule over the complete Delta region two years later the Assyrians come back to pushing much further south this time Taharka flees to Napata this time and the Assyrians once again get Egyptian governors to pledge allegiance to Assyria when they leave again several local kings and governors plot to bring Taharka back but this time the Assyrians squelch the insurrection by having all plotters assess assassinated the only surviving Egyptian is Nico who had prudently abstained from participating in the plot while his son the future Samtik the first was still in the hands of the Assyrians Taharka now was betrayed a second time by the alien chiefs of the Delta and abandoned his hopes of ever gaining Egypt. Men to met the governor of Thebes remained loyal to Taharka as did the divine Odaritus of Ammon who was of course one of, part of the priesthood. But I just want to let people know what I'm reading is important because it's documented from the Egyptian sources. Right? You might say oh I don't want to take this but they are documenting every time they had a problem with Assyria. They documented when they had a problem with um, with Sennarchip. So it's not that Hezekiah wasn't alive when when um, Taharka was alive, but the issue is that um, Taharka was not in a general position or in a king position because what the Bible says is that Sennarchip heard that the king of Ethiopia, Taharka, is coming to help them. So he could not have heard the king of Taharka because Taharka was not king until like what 11 years later 690 11 or 13 years later. So it's not about being a contradiction nobody trying to bash your Bible I'm just making it clear to you guys that the 25th dynasty with Taharka with Shabaku, Shabaku, Shebetku, Taharka rule consecutively and it's clear as day, the records is there. We don't have to pity fight about anything. It's just what happened. And that, what, it's just the truth of just what happened. You know, the Assyrians did some work and they did what they had to do to try to take over um, at that time period. All right? I'm not even going to um, stress, stress out you guys no more about this, but um, if you guys have any questions about this, we could get it in. Um, um, Shesmo, I know you want to go first. Anybody else have any comments? All right, all right. You know what, my brother, my brother, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Do you know what? Now nah, you know. Let me not even get it started yet. Let me not even get it started yet. What I'll do is go straight to the comment section and actually read out any questions or comments that anybody actually does have for you. Um, what is the Satan's name? He's on right now. Um, so the site that you was on just a minute ago, what site was that for everybody to know? Um, the 25th Dynasty, the one is Livius.org. Just go to Livius.org or you can just Google 25th Dynasty Nubians and just look for the Livius.org article. All right? And for any any time you're going to look at ancient history, Livius.org is the easiest route to go. Some people not, might not be um, registered with JSTAR or with ResearchGate. Or have um, scribed or whatever to get books, but Livius.org helps you out. It shows the actual translations of of these um of of these events in the English because of course <laughs> somebody said I couldn't read I can't read Assyrian, but I'm reading about Assyrian history because of Livius.org somebody can translate. <laughs> All right, so don't feel funny because you can't read the language, ladies and gentlemen. It's just a part of it. It's a part of the game. All right, come on, man. Said I can't read Hebrew, so I shouldn't talk about Hebrew. <laughs> that was hilarious. But anyway, yes, sir. Any other questions? All right. So yeah, everybody, I'm actually taking comments and questions um, from the YouTube right now. So if you've got any questions that you would like to actually ask, Brother Garfield, um, as well as Team Osiris and Amon Ra Squad, who we actually have on the panel as well, uh, please leave it down below in the comment section uh, to be asked. 
as well, if you're actually uh, watching the uh, recorded version of the show, please leave your comments as well in the comment section because we definitely do have our titans revisiting our videos, going through the comments and actually answering your questions on there as well. So don't feel away that just because it's live that you can't get your questions answered live. You can always say, always get it answered um, afterwards. Hey, Kalam, the comment section. by the way, on my presentation, I am going to be reviewing Ancient Kimming on Trial. Um, Zion Lexi's book. I'm going to be actually doing a review of it also on Sarnetta. All right, Sarnetta just told me personally on the phone that um, I need to come over and do the presentation. And um, I actually wanted to do it on Talk of the Titans first, but Kalam, you lose out. Your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that. So I lost out to Sarnetta TV. Yeah? See, see, anybody, you know what it is? Anybody could get on Kalam show, you know, they just need a little, a, a little susu. Our little problem and it again on Kalam show. I probably I need some um controversy. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm too nice. Uh okay. Um okay, cool. So yeah, um I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Um you know what, actually I've got a question for you. So uh, since somebody has uh mentioned uh their names, but I'm actually not gonna mention your name. Any mm. of their names at all. Um there was a little controversy actually that took place between you and another uh, brother mm -hmm. uh, with inside of the community. I don't want to talk about um, you know, the slanderous stuff that he was saying, but I would like to talk about the, um, the data he was talking about, the information, uh, the sources of your information and your scholarship. Can you touch on that? And please don't mention any of their names. Just mention uh, the issue at hand and the scholarship. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, but... Um... As far as um, there's there's a certain individual that you got their videos to be removed. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh, you're talking about what's his name? Okay, okay, okay. Yes, okay. I'm not talking. Yeah, I don't yeah, want any yeah. names mentioned. No, no, no. Actually, no. He didn't. Um, I didn't make anybody remove anything. They actually did it because he actually admitted that he was wrong. He didn't have any evidence or proof of what he was saying. Well, actually, as far as the scholarship, he had made a claim that. Most of my Persian information comes from a gentleman by the name of Philip R. Davies. And to be honest, um, the first time I ever heard about a Persian connection with the writing of the Bible was from Philip R. Davies. I'm not going to lie. And that's the truth. And I've always said that. He wrote a book called In Search of Ancient Israel. Right? As a matter of fact, let me just do... Can I share my screen real quick? Actually, it's me sharing. You're actually sharing your screen right now. All right. Let me go to our website real quickly. Redar, which is a beautiful website. As a matter of fact, most of the, 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 the scholars on here... All right, this is the guy, um, what's his name? Philip, Philip R. Davies. He wrote a book called In Search of Ancient Israel. It's actually something that Israelites use. And he was the one that actually, the first person I ever heard, mentioned that Israel was mentioned in Turkey, right? But in, in a Ugaritic text. So actually, I have the primaries for this. And I've actually seen the Israel. It's not out there in public. I don't know why. But, I mean, one day I'll present it to the, to the it's not, not like it's new information. But pretty much he's considered a minimalist, right? He said that in his book, he gave an angle of the Persians having a lot to do with the writing of the Bible. Now, I never paid it any attention until like around three years ago. I said, let me look into it. And he basically had, had his own little version or whatever. Then he had different scholars who come out and support that some of the, some of the writings pretty much come from um, Persia. You know, so... Um, <clears throat> some of the things come from Persia, and um, you could tell. You could tell, and, and ladies and gentlemen, don't take my word for it. Use common sense. Before the so-called exile, everything was done with a, with a lineage, a bloodline of kings. After the exile, the Persian colonists come in, and all of a sudden now it's no longer by a bloodline of king, but it's by the priesthood. That's a big change in how you do things. If you're usually doing it by bloodline, this is why Jesus couldn't be a bloodline of David, although he's born of a virgin, allegedly, in the story. He couldn't be because they stopped doing bloodline kingship. So where was he going to be the king of? Where? With who? Because there was no kings anymore. It was all about the priesthood. So the bloodline was gone. So that's something that um, we have to think about with the Persians. We've got to think about things that they added to, to the theology. How monotheism, my brother Divine Prospect wrote a beautiful post the other day talking about how monotheism is it what if he said that monotheism they learned about it after the exile? Which is true because if you know about Judah, Judah between eighth century and, and, and sixth century BC 
was one of the most polytheistic societies. They might say, okay, Garfield, that's what the Bible says. But the reality is they never normally worship one God. The people in that, in that vicinity, that region, always worship multiple gods. In fact, the people in Judah used to carry around like a little voodoo doll of Asherah. That's what they used to carry around. And they, the archaeologists found thousands of, 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 um, of um, what do you call it, Ju Judean figurines with Asherah. So it's like, you know, how, how people might carry a little voodoo doll in, in whoever practices voodoo. That's how they used to carry around Asherah and pray to Asherah. So a lot of people might not even know that. You know what I'm saying? And then they're going to say, oh, that's why they were sent into slavery because they did that. No. That's just the norm, man. That's what they did. Everybody, if you look at the Canaanite religion from when the Amorites came in and so forth, all of that, man. They used to worship multiple gods. That's just what they do. But as far as this guy, he, he, he basically told me about Persia first, and then I looked into it myself. And then um, he talked. About, his book talked about each. Um, this is good information. I see um, Israelites always use this, by the way. Too. They use Philip Davis. You know, he talks about the mentions of Israel and in history and and Judah and all these different things. So it's a it's a pretty good source. You know. Okay. Okay. You know what? Um, for everybody out there who's actually watching right now and enjoying the information that you're receiving from the brother Garfield, uh, please give us a big thumbs up. Let us know. Give us a big thumbs up. I mean, hit the like button down below. Hit the like button. Let us know that you're enjoying the information. Um, please, please, please help us out. I want everybody to actually know about Brother Garfield and the information he actually has to offer. Um, don't sleep on this giant right here. Okay. So you know what? A lot of people have been asking this question. I'm actually going to pull this question up um, from a brother called uh, Tyrese Harvey. <clears throat> And he asked, Garfield, did Abraham exist, and what proof do you have to suggest that he didn't exist or does exist? All right. First, uh, from a scholastic level, I can't say 100% he didn't exist. But based on the information that we have, there's a tradition. There's a tradition of, 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 of people in that region doing certain things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pull up something real quickly for you guys. It's an article on the Amorites. I've always said this. Of course, Michael Edwards is going to disagree with me. I'm going to go back and forth. But look at this. I'm going to share. Of course, I'm sharing my screen because I have nothing to hide. All right. Look at what um, they say about the Amorites. The Amorites. Um, hold on. Let me bring it down right now a little bit. All right. The Amorites and the Hebrews. Look at this. At this point in history, according to some scholars, the Amorites play a pivotal role in the development of world culture. The biblical book of Genesis states that the patriarch Terah took his son Abram, daughter-in-law Sarah, and Lot, the son of Haran, from Ur to dwell in the land of Haran. Now, the historian Krawisiak says Terah's family were not Sumerian. <laughs> I don't think Zion Lakes would like that. Terah's family were not what? Sumerian. They have long been identified with the very people, the Amaru or Amorites, whom Mesopotamian tradition blamed for Ur's downfall. William Hallow, professor of Assyriology at Yale University, confirms that growing linguistic evidence based chiefly on the recorded personal names of persons identified as Amorites shows that the new group spoke a variety of Semitic ancestral to later Hebrew. Let me repeat that, because that might have went over everybody's head. He confirms that the growing linguistic evidence based chiefly on the recorded personal names of persons identified as Amorites shows that the new group spoke a variety of Semitic ancestral to later Hebrew, meaning either a proto Canaanite dialect, Proto -Semit Semitic ancestral to later Hebrew, Aramaic, and Phoenician. What is more, as depicted in the Bible, the details of the patriarchs, tribal organization, naming conventions, family structure, customs of inheritance, and land tenure, genealogical schemes, and other vestige vestiges of nomadic life are too close to the more laconic evidence of the cuneiform records to be dismissed out of hand as late fabrications. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what does all of that mean? Laconic evidence, genealogical schemes, customs of inheritance. If you, what they're referring to, ladies and gentlemen, 
is the thing called the, the Nuzzi tablets and the Mari texts. In those texts, right, you see names. And for those who don't know, Abraham's family, you see Peleg, you see Haran, you see all these names you see in Genesis, you see in those texts. So there are names of people. So like Kalam and Garfield might be in the Bible, but in these texts that are real that we have found, they are names of cities and places where people live. So the Abraham tradition is there, but we don't see a main quote-unquote Abrahamic person. All right? So that's what people need to understand. You'll find the traditions, but you won't find the individual. All right? All right, all right. So you know what? We've got Team Osiris and we've got Amon Ra's squad in here. I'm going to open it up uh, for a dialogue or discussion to actually ensue. Um, so if you are available and you're free, uh, please give me a sign that you would like to speak next and then unmute your by, mic. By the way, man, if Ang pulls out any books, let's mute his mic. Good. <laughs> and please, uh, Garfield, if you could take, take off the uh, share mode, please. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, man. You're there catching me slipping. I'm drinking my juice. I'm trying to relax back. You're catching. You need, catching. Some, white, you need some white rum and, and, and lemonade, uh, honey, brother. Yeah. Oof, I think I'm going to have to go and dig up some of that rum still. Yeah, man. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, please, um, if you would like to speak next, uh, the mic is just open up your mic. You know what? Let me do it. Let's do this, Kalam. Mute your mic. I'm going to just moderate. And, and, and give you a little break, all right? All right, cool. Let's do this, man. A, a lot of people, a lot of controversy going on in the community. Um, let's just ask everybody their opinion about what happened with James Mark, and then I'm going to change the subject to um, we're going to talk about some things that's going on in the community as far as SETI and, 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 and so forth. Let us, I mean, let me start on my left, my brother Alan Brown. How do you feel about the whole Professor James Mark and Zion Lake situation? Yeah, peace. Um. I think it's like a it's a it's a travesty to have a person whose resume is nowhere in comparison to this man. I think that is absurd to come to debate somebody who wasn't coming to debate with you. Based over of his comments, he's like, I'm not com even prepared to. I just we were supposed to be just sitting down talking about some issues that you have. What what I said. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it has to be a a check done on individuals that will ever try to pursue something in a manner that this brother is trying to do by coming at the elders. There's no problem with addressing information they said, but to sit there with an elder who was going to take a bullet for Malcolm and say, take this out, hold this out. Like, wh what are you doing? Like, you can talk and have that conversation, but that's not what that was supposed to be about. And I think there has to be a check and balance to prevent this from happening and there's certain ways that these issues could be dealt with not in the manner that this individual is trying to do and that's that's what I got to say about that point at that at that thank you bro um brother true story and yeah the mic is yours brother five four going once going twice okay there you go go ahead beloved yeah um I'll keep it real simple all you guys came into consciousness or whatever at a certain point or whatever. When did you go in the house and suddenly tell your grandmother that there was no Jesus? What I mean by that is there's rules and regulations and ways that you go about having discussions about these things with your elders. It's not no gotcha moments that you play. And um, the rest of it, Alan summed up, the resume doesn't compare. So, you know... <laughs> It is what it is. He, Zion Lex, set it off, so he'll deal with what comes after that. Done. Uh, thank you, beloved. Heru, brother, you there? I know you say it was going to move out for a little bit. All right, if Heru going once, going twice. All right, brother Kansu, you got to comment on the whole Dr. Smalls, Professor Smalls, Zion Lex situation? Um, yeah, most definitely. Um, honestly, I really feel that uh, Professor Smalls is not an old, uh, feeble man. He's not a weak man. This gentleman has been around, this, this ancestor has been around for a very um, long time, respectfully, not in respect to his age, but in respect to his knowledge and his wisdom. 
And if he felt it necessary or worthy, he could handle Zion Lex whenever he gets ready. So I'm not too inclined to be over emotional and think that I need to protect James Smalls as James Smalls was one of the elders that educated me and my upbringing. And he's still um, a spry young mind. Um, we're not talking about physical interaction here. We're talking about mind play. And uh, Zion Lex just showed his immaturity. I don't know about him as a personal person, but I believe James Smalls would, would, would body him. In, in, in the proper dialogue and, and, and background. So what I can say is if um, Baba Smalls needs my help, I will humbly offer it. But Baba Smalls is one of my teachers. And in the order of initiate, I am to respect my elders upon call. So I won't underestimate the prowess of Brother Smalls feeling that I need to usurp him in his age because his mind is still young. He's still extremely witty, smart, and knows procedure. And if he really felt like he needed to, he would address Zion Lex. But Zion Lex is not a factor in the world. He is a pebble of sand on the beach. And I, and I rest the floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, beloved. Brother Chris, go ahead, brother. Yeah, um... One thing, um, I feel like uh, Zion Lex, um, I don't even know why he's even um, given like platforms to speak because um, one of my biggest things I, I, I've watched um, Professor James Small multiple times, and um, he's a pretty humble, um, you know, elder, and he allows like you know those younger to speak even when they're speaking bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He like he allows them to speak. Um, I'm gonna be really quick. Um, what Zion Lex is doing is not new, you know what I'm saying? Um, any Anybody can learn Hebrew and play the Gematria game like it didn't come out of medieval Europe, Spain. You know, anybody can play the, um, you know, like there's a lot of games that people can play, um, even uh, like Brother Garfield brought out um, in the book um, Visible, Visible Language. If you go to, um, after the Sumerian chapter, if you go to the Egyptian chapter, they even state that how... A lot of scholars now believe that Medunetcher, um, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, um, have predated um, the cuneiform, um, the, the you know that script that a lot of well, not gonna say a lot, but um, Zion Lex pushes. So it's easy to grab a few scholars and say, oh, this is this. That game is done. A lot of scholars no longer believe that shit. We 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 found things that date um, Egyptian inscriptions that date back to 5,200 years ago. So I mean it's a it's game over and um brother Garfield's about to wrap it up. That's all I gotta say, yo. Timo Cyrus, peace. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. My big brother, Anka Ket. Hey, what'd you say, Garfield? Yeah, we're talking about Professor Small and Zylex, man. What well, what's your opinion on the whole thing, man? Uh you you know, everybody didn't know, uh you know, James Smalls is my favorite scholar. Um, you know, I personally, you know, talk to him in person, correspond with him. You got chipped out. Brother got muted. All right. Yeah, I said um, everybody know that James Smalls, you know what I'm saying, is it, just, you know, one of the scholars that I deal with on a personal level. You know what I'm saying? Um and he's well uh, equipped to handle himself. The problem is his mindset is different than what it is to deal with his own. Like, like we already knew what it was going to be when he went. I called him in the morning. He said he was good, right? Um, but at some point, you got to send, send your younger brothers. At some point, or at least had the younger brothers with you so he can't get out on you because Smalls done done so much that he can't cuss out Zion Lex like he should have. You know what I'm saying? Like it becomes a point where you're at the age where you just can't cuss out the young dudes. That's that's when you know you got to get out that. You know what I'm saying? He's a dignitary. You know what I'm saying? He put in work in the community. That's like, <laughs> um, 
the Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan, getting in a cussing match with me. Like you could he couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yep. yep like, yep, yeah. Yep. You know, so you know, smalls went small shouldn't even have went there. You know, as far as information go, if you put them two in a debate, right, smalls will smash them up. So maybe that needs to get stuck. But he don't he hasn't even earned the right. He can't get past me. He can't get past Garfield. He can't get past nobody on the like he hasn't even earned the right to do that. He mad at me because I said this book right here was a bunch of garbage. I'm going to say it again. It's a bunch of fucking garbage. This is going to be one of the books I'm going to shoot up. So he might as well get ready for it. This has nothing to do with Rudolf Renzer. I don't even know Rudolf Renzer personally. I only know him by his writings. His example of a quote-unquote uh, reference is using the Bible. That's not a reference, man. That's not a source for anything. So this could never be considered a scholarly work. It's the truth. It's a book for those who want to believe. And, and what we do, and what we do in 2016, we call books like that non-scholarly, right? We joke it and call it pseudo, it's a bunch of bullshit. But that's not taken away from Brother Rudolph. You know what I'm saying? So we ain't going to disrespect Brother Rudolph. But this, this book right here is up for, up for smashing. Because it's a book, and if it's supposed to be right and exact, we're supposed to be able to look through it, and if it's wrong, if something ain't right, spoke there. This new shit we got going where you can't take a person's work and critique it, that's some new bullshit to try to keep cults living. So y'all all know on the panel, man, we got shit in place right now, right? If your shit ain't right, your shit ain't right. I don't care if you uh, Team Osiris, Massey Clan, Amaral Squad, Brother Unk from back in the motherfucking day, if the shit you saying ain't right and exact, it ain't right and motherfucking exact, right? So, you know, Zion, you know, he got that foolery going on. Smalls ain't familiar with that. We familiar with all the games they playing. They got some new shit going on, some new Hebrew shit. You know what I mean? Some shit that ain't, like, they don't even go by the Bible. They just stop, like you said, you all said the African American is in the Bible. What the fuck, man? So come on, man. You know what I mean? It's all funny, and we're well equipped to beat them down. So I, I, I'm i appreciating the work you're putting on his head. But we got to. We see you, Zion. Yeah, very disrespectful. You won't even smell a couch no more. See, you done. You ain't even got no platform. We got about four or five platforms we can gravitate to. We can go on Garfield show. We can go on the Real Black Atheist show. We can go on a Team Osiris show. You know what I'm saying? We can go on all the Google Hangouts. We can go on Kalam show. Yeah, you know I mean, we can go on the Amaral Squad, Google Hangout. We got about five. So we can go on the Sarnetta anytime. We got about ten platforms to beat your shit unmercifully. And the bad part about it is, you got a book, bro. So expect a spike in your sales for a minute, right? Because we on that bullshit book you wrote. You did it to yourself, Zion. The world wants to know about the literature you have produced to leave the babies. Waiting on you, bro. I'm laughing. He did it to himself, Garfield. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Let me, um, yeah, um, um sister um, replicated. Mute your mic, uh, I got you, I got you. Replicated, you got something to add to this, sister? Going once, going twice. Brother Shesmo, it's on you, my brother. I'm here. I'm just, uh, I'd have to say I agree with, uh, with Brother Ox. <laughs> I couldn't have said it with any other. I think agree. that you in the same token, um, yeah, he he just the guy's just not qualified, period. And there needs to be some uh, some type of um, order in terms of who gets to debate, who or who even gets to speak on certain topics. You know, Brother Danny and I were talking about that. And I just don't think uh, that whole thing with Zion Lex and Elder Smalls, is, um, I couldn't watch it. Just say that it was ridiculous. I think it's Elder Smalls. I was disappointed that he even participated in that. I think um, that's beneath him to say the least. You know, he's he's earned his stripes. He has no dues left to pay to us. You know, um, I think that I think, you know, um, from his perspective, he might just be trying to, you know, uh, offer an elder's, you know, energy which is necessary 
But unfortunately, the platform that it's played out in is just, it's so raunchy. And, uh, you know, say the fade the black on all that shit. That's all I got to say. All right. Thank you, Queen. All right, let's 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 move on to our next topic, man. We have um um a couple of a couple of repercussions or a couple of um things that might come out of all of this, but you know, brother brother um Sarah, what, what what's the new name? Sarah Pseudo Steady. <laughs> he has come out and 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 he has said a couple of things regarding um evolution and so forth. But let me let me start this off. Let me start um brother Ank off with this part because uh he was touching on this last night. Go ahead, brother Ank. Floor is yours, brother. Um, we just, I mean, just all you got to do is look at the panel. We got about five, six, um, hell, how many people in here? Timo Cyrus and then the research team you got. Mm -hmm. um, so that shows you that the, the days of the one guy scholarship is over with, right? Yes, sir. And I'm going to speak for the groups on this. Timo Cyrus, you know what I'm saying? was put together to protect the Amara squad, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Masi clan was put together to protect Timo Cyrus Amara squad, right? Uh, Amara squad is in place to make sure that y'all got an avenue to beat the shit out of motherfuckers when they out of order of that scholarship because y'all younger. It, 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 when I say younger, I, I'm saying that the majority of the members, right, are younger than me and you, Garfield. That's the truth. You younger than me. You feel me? And and so, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, y'all turn to have y'all fun at it. We here to do what we got to do, but it's a team effort. Okay? And so, for Sarah Street and Seti, all of us, right, will protect the general. You know what I mean? When he doing what he do. You mm -hmm. can't attack the general. We, gonna, we got his back when, when we fighting for Africa. You know what I'm saying? But but man, we're dedicated to science and technology. And the general ain't got shit without science and technology. So the general, right, supposed to be the war general, he can't turn on the scientists. Even in Germany, when the United States was fighting against fucking Germany, right, they didn't attack the scientists. What did they do to the scientists, Garfield? What they did? They um they killed them? They, no. Uh, no. They kept them um. They no. kept them running. No, they just brought the scientists over to the United States. That's mm -hmm. how valuable science is to the army, bro. Mm -hmm. They gave them way, way to the fuck up out of there. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So no general with some goddamn sense, right, would turn against the science fucking department, bro. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I'm just thinking he'd be being funny for real. Too many niggas for him to deal with for real. You know what I'm saying? We not even in his lane. He got his own niche, his own lane that he's been rocking for the last 10 years, man. Everybody love him, man. That's why I be feeling a certain way when he step out of bounds like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like come on, man. Like, like I only go but so far, you know what I'm saying, with evolution. I, but when it comes to the in-betweens, I know who the fuck to defer to. It ain't hard. You feel me? So said he gotta gotta know when to defer, man. He gotta know when stop showing off for his little son. Yeah, you know I mean he ain't gotta show off for Ferro. Yeah, you know I mean like all right, that's your work in progress, yo. Your legacy is gonna go down in flames with Ferro. Like who the fuck does that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know I mean pull a young brother up. Yeah, you know I, mean? I ain't got no problem with talking to none of the young brothers on this panel when I'm feeling like they fucking wrong. You fucking wrong. You fucking wrong. And I don't have a problem with them talking to me. But it's a way we're going to do that shit. So I'm just feeling like after all the good work the city has put into the community, right? You know, after him saying, well, y'all not giving the young brothers a chance, yo. When young Mark would come on with a good conversation, right? He don't give him that chance. You know what I mean? So I'm feeling a certain way when he jumped in the lane that's not even his, man. That's not like, like the linguistics, the whole language piece. You know, he beat that. He tried to beat that up. You know, everything is the white boy shit. Y'all can't translate the shit. It's the white boy shit. Y'all can't deal with the science. It's the white boy shit. At a certain time, man, you know, you can fool some of the people some of the time, right? And most of the people all the time. But you can't fool everybody all the time. And there's too many of us to be fooling us. 
We ain't riding nobody coattail. If I say too much ill shit that can't be supported, it's going to be grumblings amongst all of us. Am I not right or wrong, Garfield? You're right. You're right. You're like, man, you make out, man. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Y'all do that shit now. Well, I, 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 but that's why y'all there, though. Because yeah, that's the fun part. Keep a nigga sharp. You feel me? Get a nigga out the game of hearing back. Yeah, hey, yo, come on, yo. You got your jump shot off, son. You know, like Kobe, yo, he retired, yo. It was time to retire, yo. So I already know what it is, man. So, you know, Sadie, man, you, you can't do that. You, you can't do that, bro. You can't you can't be in a lane that you're not qualified to deal with, man. You need a team. Yo. I'm going to tell you the same shit I told the Hebrews. You need a team, man. And, and it can't be, it can't be, uh, uh, the young suit up. Can't be buzzed like, yeah, man, that can't be your team. You can't leave your legacy with that, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to teach that brother. All right? You can't let that brother hey, over. Hey, That's you bananas. Know, you know the ironic thing about this? this time, you, told, told, you told him you how to start. Uh, I mean, you told him how to start a scholarship. You told him to do what? Start Hebrew War Machine. Remember, you gave Nazi that advice. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You basically gave birth, birth to the Hebrew War Machine. Indirect. Yep. Sure did. You got an honor. You got an honor in the body, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let's move along, man. Enough, enough, enough of us. We're going to be done. I don't know why. You're right. You're right. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. Um. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me go. Let me go to um. Alan Brown, man. See, there's an issue that he want to bring up as far as scholarship. If you, if you got an issue with scholarship in the community right now, come out, say what the issue is, and give us where the sources or whatever you want to talk about. Alan, go ahead, my brother. Yeah, man. I, I'm I'm starting to see this like uh this trend of the the Hebrews running to Samaria, and um because it's like a lack of actual proof of certain patriots in the book to say precisely this is 100% what happened. So we got a lot of people looking at uh, mixing up writing with with uh, pictographs that don't represent total uses of language with sounds and saying, oh, look, yes, 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 we got this writing here. Um, look, we have um, Asa. Asa's name is right here. This is who he is. This is what he represents. Yeah, yeah, this is before uh, Kemet. Yeah, yeah. And when we go look up Asar, Asar Luli or Asar Luhai, and we look up these tablets, we see the actual dates of them. We see when they was made. And when we compare it to the real linguist, and we look at it, we like, oh, brother, the word Asar is not really there. There's a W. It's what saw. What are you talking about? These stories don't, 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 they don't go together. So, it's just a lot of funny stuff that I'm seeing now that is kind of weird, and they're really gravitating to this thing so much, and it seems like people want to be anything other than Africans. It's like you're scared to say that you're African. You're scared to say that you came from there. You want to come from the Levant, but we didn't come from the Levant. We came from West Africa. We came from these places, and it's just it's just getting asinine now, and I'm, it's, it's, it, it, I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Hey, let me get my thank you, my brother. Let me get um brother Truth Story in. The microphone is yours, brother. Um, I just like to, you know, piggyback over Alan a little bit, introduce a phrase, and it's called exotic Negroes. <laughs> I like that. What, this that is one. what this community is turning to and in search of. Besides anything with West African, it's like also trying to peel off layers of blackness. So you have an era of exotic Negroes. That's it. Mm. All right. Thank you, brother. Brother Heru, you're back. If not, let me move on to um to Consul. Consul, go ahead, brother. Any issues in the community as far as information you want to bring out? Talk about it. Let's get it in. Um, You know, no, not that. Not really, bro. My only thing is I uh, raised the bar on uh, methodology and fundamentalism. Just raised the bar. Hey, go go ahead, um, brother, brother Chris. You up, brother? Oh, my only um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, my my actually um my only it, it's it's a few certain issues. Um, the thing that we're already doing, which I love. Um, I grew up in the past. I was never into the pseudo stuff. I my personality was always like go to the source, you know, go to the source of the information. So I see a huge change in a lot of things going on, and I appreciate that. I love that so much. Um, one thing I do see changing now, which I've been advocating, is like you know this like you know everybody's Egyptian, or everybody's Hebrew. You know what I mean? Um, Africa has Af Africa is huge, and you know as Africans we come in um, you know multitude of different ethnic groups, uh, different languages, uh, different classification of languages and stuff. Um, I'm not going to get too much into details. I mean, you can people can already see where I'm coming from with stuff just from my posts, but I just want people to be more honest. Be open. You know, don't don't necessarily attack something because you are not familiar with it. Um, but everybody, I just want everybody to just try to be open. And I'm not I'm not a new expert. I'm a student. You know, but everybody should just try to be open. All right. Thank you, my brother. All right, let's get to um, Sister Replicated. You want to say something, Sister, as far as information? Go ahead, Sister. Yeah, I like to see some type of um, organization go on. You know, definitely there needs to be some distinctions between levels of teachers and, you know, once again, who's qualified to speak in public. You know, a lot of us are going through that grooming phase. You know, I'm for years deep into being an issue. A lot more years than to, you know, um, this personal study. But I don't come out and, uh, because I just don't feel like I'm at that point in my life and my research and all that. that you know, there's a lot of things I can say and I don't think it's just enough people doing it, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that there needs to be some kind of um, order when it comes to, you know, who gets to speak on what but for everybody who's already organized, I think that would be wise to start to in implement some of those principles as far as you know, um, you know what the initiates can do and what the uh, elders can do. You know, um, Brother Danny and I were talking about that the other day, and I you know far cry from where we're at now with this. But you know, that's definitely something that I think we should put in the back of our minds. I think it would definitely alleviate a lot of this bullshit that we're seeing. You know? um, that's all I have to say. Uh, um, thank you, sister. I'm going to mute your mic. Brother Shesmo Patar, are you there, brother? Peace, peace. I'm in the building. All yeah, right, um, it's, yeah please, I'm no, noticing. No long speeches, brother. No long speeches. All right, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just see a lot of disrespect in the community as a whole, you know what I mean, whether it's between our sisters and brothers, um, between our elders and the youth, um, just between, you know, each other, it's just a lot of disrespect. And just to carry on, I agree with um, what everybody has, has said on the panel thus far, and just to carry over what, what was said a little earlier. You know, I had the opportunity. Um, Brother Unk put on the uh, Comedic Science um, Conference down in Atlanta, and I got to sit at, um, for two days, I got to sit at the feet of uh, our um, esteemed Professor Smalls. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I love the brother. I love, I, he's like a grandfather to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, for um, Zion Lex to um, be so childish and immature to um you know to come after you know, or to go at um professor smalls and yeah i definitely agree it's not about emotion and i'm sure he could handle himself but he doesn't have to um he's got you know individuals who love him enough that will stand in the gap for him um and hopefully would even take a bullet like he would take a bullet for like he um, um had the opportunity to guard and uh, be there for um El, uh, Haz Malik. So, um, but with that said, you know, and with SETI, you know, we I agree. We, we, we all need to stay in our lane. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, with that, I'm going to fall back. And I was trying to find some information um, in UNESCO 
um, to support what you were talking about earlier. Um, I'm still looking, but I did find um, some 25th um, Dynasty stuff, um, and maybe we can um, you know, read on that a little bit later. But with that, I'll, I'll fall back. Okay. Um, the sister asked a question, right? In the um, sister, um, we call her Mother Earth. She was not. I'm going to share my screen real quickly here. And, and my team, forgive me for sharing this to the community, but I just want to make a point about what the sister said. The sister said that what should we present to the community? Now, if you can see my screen, this is a picture of an ank, right? This is alleged to be in here that this is an ank right here. You could clearly see this is the form of an ank. We could present this to the community, but guess what? I haven't confirmed it yet. My team hasn't confirmed it. Let's take, let's take a look at something else. Let's take a look at something else real quickly here. This says that the clay tablet from the Jemdet Nassar, which is in Samaria, or Mesopotamia, from 3000 BC, since the signs appeared there later, then, then the ones in the Carpathian Basin may refer to the fact that this writing started from Carthopian Basin and not from Mesopotamia. Now, this, is a, this would be a dagger for the people who support Mesopotamia. But guess what? We oh. have... We haven't we haven't confirmed it yet, so we can't go out and just say, hey, you know what? This information we're gonna bring it to the community because we're gonna win a debate, and that's the irresponsibility that I see, not from us, but from the other sides. People people just want to go around and just show and and just say something without saying, hey, you know what? I want to win a debate. People just want to win debates. It's not about winning debate. It's about putting out information. So anything I'm associated with have to come correct. Because remember, I'm representing not only my own personal team, I'm rep representing Team Osiris. I'm representing under the Amara squad. So if we're supposed to be the top dogs as far as research, we got to bring honesty to the community. We can't bring lies. We can't bring beliefs. So when somebody tells me the Kushites were born in Mesopotamia and that they brought information to Nubia and put it in a book, that's serious. That's serious right there. Because that's crazy. I thought Kushites were supposed to be back, black. Now all of a sudden they're from Mesopotamia? Are you serious? Come on, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's deeper, man. It's deeper than you think. Whose mic is that? All right, cool. You go ahead, Ank. You got the floor, brother. Yeah, this is this book right here. You got this book, Garfield? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good book, right? Yes, sir. That's the grab. It's a beast. Page 52. The questions of the patriarchs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my daughter. You got that crazy. They say the basic problem was that the only information preserved uh, was what could be found in the text of Genesis. There is no direct external confirmation, either epigraphic or literary. Uh, a number of further problems presented themselves, such as the following. Except for Jacob Israel, the reference to the patriarchs are attested in Israelite tradition only. So, so, so let's get this straight here. When we want to confirm something, right, you can't prove the book with the book. That's why I I fear no Israelite, I fear no Christian, and I fear no goddamn Muslims. Because you can't prove the book with the book. The only place that you're talking about the patriarchs is in a book and is in later on tradition. And we call this an anachronism. So when you say Abraham comes from the Or Chaldees, there is no city called the Or Chaldees in 1700 BCE. You find that city later on. There is no camels, right, during a time period when Genesis is supposed to have been taking place. It's called an anachronism. Simple as that. So if I say, like, Baltimore, Mer if I say Abraham came from Baltimore, Maryland, well, goddamn, there is no Baltimore, Maryland into the founding of the goddamn United States. Simple. So that's why I guess y'all just feel like fucking with the Hebrew shit. I beat him up forever. Now I'm saying, like, I just got off the case. Now I'm going to smack the moors up for a while. 
to the, get their mind straight. All right. So, no, there is no evidence of no damn Abraham. All that shit is lofty stories. You know what I'm saying? So lying Lex, as usual, you're lying Lex. And anytime you want to get it in, you know what I'm saying, we can always get it in. But we see you. We got that book, boy. We got that book. Damn, yeah, we got to start calling him his name, Ben. Just call him his real name. Ben. I call him Lying Lex, though. I like the Lying Lex. Lying Ab Lex Ben. Abdiel, Abdiel Ben Levi. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ben Levi. Go ahead, go ahead, Alan. You got the floor anyway. Go ahead, brother. What do you want to drop? Nah, go I ain't got that doesn't go on about that, bro. Hey, let me ask, let me ask you this, brother. I'm gonna ask you a personal question. Let me put you on the hot seat, man. I got two questions for you, man. Okay. How are they getting these dates for Mesopotamia, man? I can't find no evidence that these dates. I'm reading the, the, the consensus from the Oriental Institute. Why where do they get these dates from? Well, a lot of them come from Samuel Kramer. So when they use Samuel Kramer, he's one of the, the, the major purporters of those specific dates. Now, what they do is, like, for instance, when we look at the, the order of cuneiform writing, it starts with those so-called tokens or envelopes that they have. And then they'll have a date of 8,000 B.C. on it, talking about these are the original um, precursors to proto cuneiform pictographs, etc. But when they looked at it and extensively, they was like, um, this basically does not add up. So that's where the research stops. It stops right there, and no one looks past it. So when we look on the uh, cuneiform digital um, library, which has all of the actual original tablets that you can go directly to them, like when we look at Gilgamesh, we go straight to it. It is, say, 1100 A.D. But there is something weird that happens with the Sumerian text is that they find them in different areas and put them all together and then put the, the later date of the story to represent all of it. So when we look at Gilgamesh in the Sumerian text, you won't see certain parts of the flood there at all. They find the other parts and put it together and say, okay, yeah, 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 this is, this is 2600. Yeah, yeah, but the, it was never there in the first place. So the objective of all of that is to go directly to the tablets and where they house that in all of these museums. And when we look at those texts and what they say, you see a whole redating coming from it. They'll say that, oh, there was pine cones finding some of the tablets. Some of the tablets, they had no use for them no more, so they put them inside of their buildings, etc. So they'll tell you, only with the Sumerian stuff you see this, that they say it is impossible to give you a correct date on this. So why are they going with that date? Because they want to promote that so-called white civilization as being the foundation of everything and cut Africa out. Of it. All that's right. how that's how I get it. Hey, hey Garfield. Yes, sir. You know, you know, I went to the uh, Egyptian Museum in uh, what is it in Harlem, right? Metropolitan. Metropolitan. Yeah, and you know, I took some. No, pictures. I turned around literally. This, I, she I looked at you again. I tell you all this, man. I took some pictures of film of. Uh, some 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 uh, some seals, right? You know, that look like Mesopotamian seals, but they pre-dynastic Egyptian shit. They Egyptian artifacts, bro. I ain't even brought that out yet. <laughs> you know, I just be having fun and shit. It's right there. I, I swear, yo, it's funny as hell. Y'all like, man, these niggas is crazy. I'm going to find that and I'm going to post that. It's funny, wow. yo. Like, like, go to a museum and show me where you at with that shit, yo. Wow. Yeah, you got film, yo. You know, you know, it's crazy. They have a um they have a hold on, let me start to find this website real quickly and show you guys. They have so many fake hold on, let me show my screen real quick for the people at home watching. Look at look at this right here. This is a site of um fake Sumerian archaeology that's been yeah. put all mm -hmm. over and people don't realize that they're fake. Look at these cylinders. It's a big yeah. industry in Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. I even have one where the guys, the guy, mm -hmm. uh, the guy sold the thing for $127,000. Fake archaeology with these cylinders. They couldn't date them. This is what it says in, 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 visual, in, in visible language. Let me go to the book. Should I even go to the book again? 
I read it earlier when I was on Zion Lexi's show. How are you dating these items? How are you dating them? Because if they can't date them, how are you? Where, where are you getting your date from? This is, this, is, this is what I want to know. People say 3,800, 3,700. Where are you getting your dates from? And let me ask Chris, so where Chris at? Chris, you still there? Chris, hold me a mic a second. I got a question to ask you. I'm fine, there, Gil. Chris. It's not even here, man. Chris out. Okay. For everybody who's hey, I'm, st I'm still here. For everybody who's all right. For everybody who's watching right now, if you are loving the information that you're hearing so far, hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Say, say it again. My, my, ask your question. My phone's acting funny. Say it again. Hold, hold on, Chris. Um, um, the host is saying something. Let him finish. Let him finish. Okay. For everybody who's actually enjoying the show so far, please, please, please hit the like button. Hit the like button. Let us know that you're enjoying the show as well. Please um, share this link with the rest of your friends. I'm pretty sure. Um, you know what, our Hebrew brothers would love to actually, um, you know what, hear this information and possibly challenge this information um, in the upcoming days and weeks. So this will be really interesting if we can actually get this uh, shared amongst the Hebrew community. And as well, uh, the comedic community, I believe this is a lot of ammo um, that you're receiving right now. So please um, like it and share it so other people can actually benefit um, from the information that you're partaking from right now and learning from right now. I know I'm learning some information um, in the uh, chat section as well. Uh, so if you've got any questions that you would like to actually ask our uh, panel members as well as Garfield, please, please, please uh, write it down and just tag Titans TV and I'll ask the questions as soon as possible. But we're literally in the last 10 minutes of the show, um, so please get your questions in as soon as possible. Uh, my brother. Um, well, yeah. um, my brother. I'm I was just reading. reading. I'm reading. They say that they actually want a Hebrew to actually be in there in the panel section itself. Uh, but yeah, brother Garfield, I'm actually gonna give it back to you, and uh, please keep control of the show. All right, cool. Hey, Chris. Um, check your volume, man. Your volume was mad loud a while ago, bro. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Where Chris at? Is he there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? All right, cool. Can you see my right, screen? Cool. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen, brother? Can you see my screen, brother? I just, I, it's, it's just like a, like, it's just like a, like a, it just looks tan. I don't see nothing on it. Okay, this is on the main But since you can't see, you're on your phone? You see, you're on your phone? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm on my phone right now. Alright, you can't see it clearly. Right, you can't see it clearly. I was gonna show, I was gonna show you all real quickly. We talk about writing. We talk about writing. Because the men, 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 has, it has the, 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 has, the, it has the, 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 the actual writing on the symbol. So when you look at it, you could tell that it's actually something that was written. You know, but um, since you can't read it, don't worry about it. We, we, we deal with it another time. Don't worry about it. I just wanted you to translate for me so everybody could see. But uh, don't worry about it. I wanted you to clarify that it was actual writing. You know, that was my point. But um, let's move on to something else, man. Did, 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 Chris, did you want to say something otherwise? Hey, it, um, hey Gar Garfield, if you can later, even if you can uh, whenever, um, uh, you can uh, shoot it through my um, chat. I'm about to plug my phone in and open up my laptop. Garfield, um, you can just share it on the screen. I'm pretty sure our audience members could um, see uh, whether it's writing or not. Garfield? Yes, brother. Let me share it right now. Is my screen being shared? No, it's not. Let me bring it up. Yes, now it's being shared. All right, let me bring it back up. Here it goes right here. Yeah, let me make it bigger. If you look at this sign right here, this is the sign of Min, which is a, it's, it's called the Min Palette. 
from the Nakata 2 period, right? So the Min palette, if you look here, the Emerald of Min on the palette is a typographic ligature of two Egyptian hieroglyphs. So this, is, this goes even before the 3250 date that they give us because that's what's on the actual tablet, I mean palette, I'm sorry. So it is actually a hieroglyph. So this is actual writing. I hope everybody sees what I'm saying. This right here is min. See that sign with the curvature? Go across. Look at what it says. See right here? The same thing right here. All right? I just wanted everybody to see that. So that's actual writing predating what the consensus says right now, or what the white folks is telling us. So we want to say Sumeria predates, hey, there's something that goes even further back. Just wanted to put that out there. And I'm not no Medjinetta reader either. Okay, Mr. Mr. Zion? Shoot. But anyway, let's let's uh, move on to something else, man. Let's talk about um, another topic that I love to talk about is um, Nebuchadnezzar and, and his, his, um, his victorious things that he did while he was actually in um, taking over under the so-called Babylonian Empire. You know, how, hey, Alan Brown, let me put your mic open. Let me put you. Hold on. Shesmo, did you want to say something before I go to Alan? Um, when you get back um, to the Tahawk, I had those two, I had two pieces I wanted to read to, just to add to the um, dialogue. You want me to read it now? Can you hear me? Garfield, are you there? Yes, brother. I'm here, brother. I muted my mic because you were sounding kind of shit. You didn't sound clear, so I muted my mic. Go ahead, my brother. Okay, okay. Let me um, pull it up then. Um, first thing I just was going to read from UNESCO. Um, it doesn't say, this particular piece doesn't say anything about Taharqa, but. Um, it talks about the Sudanese 25th dynasty. Um, there was another invasion of Egypt in, in about 720, and it lines up with, with um, the dates that you were referring to, but this time from the south, from a capital of the fourth cataract, Pianchi, a Sudanese who ruled the Sudan between the first and sixth cataracts, found himself powerful enough to challenge the throne of the pharaohs. A certain Tafnak of Sais had succeeded in uniting the Delta and occupied Memphis and was lying, laying siege to Heraclopus. Um, Pianchi seized upon the report that the ruler of Hermopolis in Middle Egypt had joined forces with Tafnak um, to send an army into Egypt. He was no doubt a, a gallant ruler. Uh, his, chi his chivalry in battle his astore avoidance of captured uh, princesses, uh, his love for horses, his uh, scrupulous performances of religi or religious ritual, and his refusal to deal with conquered princes who were ceremoni ceremonially unclean, they were uncircumcised and eaters of fish, are uh, indicative of his character. His dynasty lasted for 60 years before the Assyrians, after many campaigns, succeeded um, in putting an end to it. And then the last, um, Pete, and that was from uh, uh, chapter, uh, volume two of the UNESCO, um, I call them journals. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece is coming from the wonderful Ethiopians. Um, let's see. Where we traverse the whole length of, oh, let, me, let me go up a little bit. This talks about Taharqa. Uh, 1670 between between the 23rd year of his reign, the Assyrians drove to Harka out of Egypt. Okay, that's that's the end of it. Let me pull it back up a little bit higher. Uh, the Tanites, 1090 BC, succeeded in expelling the priests of Amun and established dominion over Egypt. The, they reigned 100 years. They were succeeded by the Bubastes of Lower Egypt with the Tanite dynasty. 
the high priesthood, which had been so powerful from early ages with the royalty, retired to Ethiopia and set up a rival state at Napata. Um, Azak Amen, king of Ethiopia, starting from Napata, invaded Egypt, traversed the whole length and penetrated Palestine at the head of an army of Ethiopians and Libyans, 800 B.C. Pianchi made the Thibia, Th Thibayid a simple province dependent upon Ethiopia. Uh, the people of Egypt favorably received his ascension to the throne at Thebes. They were better disposed toward an Ethiopian king than one of the Delta. 693 B.C. to Harka conquered the whole Nile Valley. Thebes welcomed him with enthusiasm. Priest opened the gates of Memphis. He fixed his capital at Thebes. Strabo said that to Harka rivaled Ramesses II in his conquests, which extended westward to the Pillars of Hercules, which I guess that's out there in the Mediterranean to the west, and eastward to the Assyrian dominions. With the, with the wrestling of Egypt from Ethiopia, Ethiopian conquerors, the old empire died. So after um, uh, that was conquered, that was the last of the old empire. Just wanted to share that with you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well said, man. Thank you for that. Um, Garfield, I just want to let you know we're entering the last two minutes of the show. Yes, sir. Um, let me just get everybody a comment from everybody. And um, thanks for joining us. And um, I don't know what the date is yet. I'm going to be on Sunday or probably, probably within the next week. And um, I'm going to do a presentation on pretty much your information. We're going to talk about Sumer and um, scholarship and suitorship. We're going to talk about people's books, and we're going to get the information out. We're going to get the truth out and show people how they, how, they, how they research and how they lack research, and they go around and call themselves scholars. If somebody called me a scholar, does that mean Garfield is a scholar? I don't like the name scholar. I think a researcher, I'm a very good researcher. That's what I tell people. I like to research. I don't want nobody calling me scholar. You know what I'm saying? If they do it as a compliment, fine. That doesn't mean I'm a scholar, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not because somebody says that about you. Maybe they're just giving you a compliment to make you feel good about what you presented. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. But I'd rather you just call me your brother. I'd rather you just call me your brother. Hey, brother, brother Garfield. Yes, sir. This is our brother Chris. Um, I look. I, I saw the image. It was uh, shared to me. Oh, uh, it's legit. It is it, it, the the um the men power is legit. All right, my brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, let me, I'm going to go down the whole line so that we have the last two minutes in. So everybody just say a last, um, take 10 seconds to make a last comment, and then we just call it a night. All right? I'm going to start with my brother, Alan Brown. Alan, the floor is yours, brother. No, I'm good. I, I, I think everything was peace on the build. I don't really got nothing else for it, man. I think you did a good job. I think everybody here has some good comments. I just, right. I'm just tired of hearing Ben Levi. <laughs> Go ahead, truth story. Uh, real quick, just to all my Jewish, Asiatic, Moorish, Macedonian, exotic Negroes, there's a place called West Africa. Come home. Good night. <laughs> hey, Rue, floor is yours, brother. Yo, Zion Lex is done. That's it. Damn. Cotton soup. Going once. Yo, what up? Peace to the peace to the family, and uh, good vibes. I'm out. It was Chris. You up, brother? Um, I just want to say uh, peace to uh, you know all um, you know, peace to peace of universe. You know all all things that exist within the universe. Um, visibly, the things that we don't know. Um, peace, especially to all African descendants around the planet. And um, it's a new age, man, and get ready. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things that were tolerated, it will not be tolerated anymore. But, you know, peace and love. All right. 
Thank you, brother. Um, let's get from Real Black Atheist. You're on. You're up, brother. Any last comments before we get off the air, brother? Hey, I'm atheos. <laughs> Anti-Greek God, anti-Roman God, anti-human, I mean, Roman God, anti-Hebrew God, anti-Jewish God, uh, anti-Christian God. You ain't say Moors. Huh? You ain't say Moors. Who said Moors? You, you ain't say that you're anti the Moors God. You're leaving out the Moors. You're scared of the no, Moors. I said anti-Islam. Moors ain't number Muslims, yo. All right, all right. <laughs> they practice Islamic culture. There is, watch this, there is no such thing as Moors culture because culture is transmitted through the language. Wow. Right? Let's get this straight. There is no real legitimate Moors culture because culture is transmitted through the language. What's the language of the Moors culture? Mm, damn. Arabic. So you're transmitting Arabic culture. How do we know? Because we understand, right, that the Arabs are in control. Why? Because when the first group of quote-unquote Moors, Berbers, some sub-Saharan African slave armies, right, went with General Tariq, who had no real power, right, when they, when they got the peninsula, okay, a year later the Arabs came in and took credit for the victory, and when they divvied up the land, Watch this. When they divvied up the land, they gave the Arabs the land in the south, the best and fertile land, and gave the Berbers and the Sub-Saharan Africans the land in the north that was closer to the Vandals. So they was like a buffer. Right? So if they were so in partnership and so equal, why did they give them the worst goddamn land? You can read this in the chapter in, in, in Robin's Walker work, When We Rule. Read, it, read the chapter on the Moors. Very, very important. So I don't want to hear all that. So at the start of what they calling the Moors and all that shit, they was already in default and already treated like a bunch of slaves. And can't nobody get around that fact. Where did the land go to? Who got the best land? The culture that transmits the language got the land. And with that. Peace. Peace. All right, peace, All right. peace and black peace power. And black power. All right, guy. replicated, replicated. You up, you up, sister. I just want to say peace to the fam and uh, peace to the DGs, our ancestors, and peace to the source, and the peace right. to these books <laughs> for the day. <laughs> it's you, good building with y'all. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you, Queen. All right, brother Shesmo, you up. Yeah, let me just say, uh, continue to bring the scholarship. Um, you not continue to stand on the shoulders of the Ukuluku, our ancestors. Respect. Masi Spears up. Team Osiris up. Magi Arrows up. Amon Ra Squad up. And that's peace. All right. All right. That's peace, man. I just want to say thank you, Brother Kalam, for giving me the opportunity to come on your show, my brother. It's always a blessing. And I just want to say that, you know what, study for your own, man. Don't take nothing that Goffey said here as as 100%. Do your own research. And I think one of the problems, why we take advantage of our own community so much, is that we don't like to read on a whole mass level anymore. We used to. I don't know. It's like the books are like kryptonite. So do your own research, man. Don't worry about what I said. Just write down the information and double check it. And that's what these folks do to their own community. Because what I notice is if certain people in the Hebrew community, yeah, I'm going to say it. If I say divorce, they'll agree with me. They'll say, oh, divorce, okay. That means it must be true. They don't double check the information because it's a belief, belief thing. Like, oh, we have the same belief, so I could trust them. And that's what they do. They take advantage of that. So anytime somebody sees anybody from the Hebrew community debating somebody from a non-Hebrew community, They'll believe the person in the Hebrew community, even if they're lying. And that needs to stop. So so lately, I've been calling out people. They saw me on Sarnetta. They mad. I've never seen Hebrews. They had so many comments on that video, Ank. I've never seen Hebrews so mad in my life. In all my, in all my life, I've never seen Hebrews so mad. And that means the truth hurts. It must have hit somewhere. So I'll be on Sarnetta soon. They're going to get some more heat after this one. 
because it's going to be a knockout. I, t I guarantee you. Thank you, Brother Kalam. Peace. Jeez. Love that. Peace. You know what? Um, brother Divine Prospect, I think we need to have that brother on the show uh, very soon. I know he's got a fantastic presentation that's out at the moment uh, talking about henotheism with the pre-exilic uh, Hebrews or the pre-exilic uh, Israelites. So that's going to be interesting. Um, God brother, damn, you smash. I'm cut you off. God damn from Amara squad. All right, all right. Amara squad is taking uh, taking credit for that one. I want to know what he's got to say afterwards about this. Um, but yeah, we're gonna move on nice. Then I'm gonna end the show. Um, but yeah, divine prospect. That's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be real interesting uh, to hear his full presentation. Uh, so peace to the brother. And you know what, my brother Garfield held it down today. Team Osiris held it down today. Mossy Warrior Clan held it down today. Dagger Squad held it down today, and of course, Armin Ra Squad held it down today. So thank you everybody for um, participating and joining in. Uh, this has been Talk with the Titans, and I've been your host, Calamel, signing out. Peace. <laughs>